Hello and thank you for watching the Translator 6.1 sneak peek video. We're just about to release Translator 6.1 and it has a lot of nice new features that you'll really like that have been requested by our customers over time. Um, sometimes our releases aren't that huge of a deal because we're always putting stuff into our programs incrementally. So uh, all of a sudden you have this program and it shakes the world, well not from us because we're just more incremental about we update things. But with 6.1 we tried to change that around a little bit to where we convert it, uh, we just put Translator in the shop all summer and put in things that we needed some time to put in and that's what we did. Translator 6.1 should be out early September and all of our uh, all of our customers will be notified and you can always update by putting uh, just starting translator and it'll tell you there's an update available and that allow you to download it. Sampler Tools customers will have the same option in, in doing that. So uh, let's go and see all what these new for the features are. I'll just summarize them right off the bat. First of all, there's about 10 plus new uh, input and export formats that we have. Uh, we'll show you all those. There's improvements on the auto sampler. We put it into the main interface and also added some nice functions like uh, multi-channel support. We added a search and lookup, uh, a search and lookup uh, function. Uh, we added a looper dialog. Uh, we approved our status dialog, and we added some docking improvements to our dialogs. And there's some tweaks on the interface that we made just to make things a little bit more clear and smoother. Most importantly, and this is a little strange for a video, but there's a lot of things that we can't show you because they're all internal and under the hood. We are constantly working on our conversion engine, which powers a lot of Chicken Systems products. And it's the heart and soul of everything that the interfaces show. And we get a lot of help from our user base that tells us about different data and different things that they'd like to see or things that don't work or even tra crash translator. So there's a lot of things that are in 6.1 that just add to the stability of the program. One last thing before we get started, Translator has been out for about 15 years now. It got started just about the turn of the millennium, even before that, the year 2000. And now we're in the year 2015 and Translator is still going strong and is supported by all the, uh, it supports all the major modern operating systems. El Capitan, that's 10.11 OS X, that supports Windows 10. Uh, it is modern and it's for, the, for you to use to improve your sample library. So let's get started and let's look at all the new formats. This is just an emu thing. As you can see, this is just normal. But let's uh, take one of these banks and attempt to convert it. And we just select it and hit the translate button and they'll still show, show us all the new formats and this is the way we'd like to go through it. Um, the first thing I'd like to note is a format that we've supported actually for a long time that just got integrated into Logic 10 and that's Alchemy. Uh, this says Camel Audio but in the future it's going to be Apple Al Alchemy so we'll change the wording of that and we fully support Alchemy converting into it and out of it. So. This is going to be really handy for the people who own Logic because Alchemy is given to them absolutely free. And so this gives us the ability to convert right into it. Uh, Alchemy support will also be given to all EXS24 edition people. So that's a freebie for them and that will be nice. Anyway, that's not a new format. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, the same thing has to do with Mach 5. Mach 5 3 is supported, has been for quite a while. And it's a great sampler, and again, we are we just don't sit still with old formats and old things like the old Mach 5. Just because Mach 5.3 can load Mach 5.1 doesn't mean we're not going to support Mach 5.3, but we do support Mach 5.3. Again, that's not a new sampler, but we just like wanted to point that out. Okay, let's get started on looking at the new formats. The first one we like to show is Sample Tank 3. Uh, it's a new uh, new version of the uh, old sample tank, and you'll notice that you can select mock, uh, what you're converting into. This can be uh, sample tank one, two, or three, and this is how you select sample tank three, and you can see it's reflected in the list. 
Uh, strangely enough, we never uh, converted into sample cell. We used to a long time ago, but we dropped that. But just for the heck of it, we put it in now. Most of it, mostly that's for Elisa's quadrasynth quadra people who can load sample cell instruments, strangely enough. But it's, it's an old keyboard, but we wanted to support it anyway. Uh, we like to support all the modern things, but we definitely try to support everything that's gone in the past, too. Another important new format is Ableton Sampler and Simpler. Uh, this is part, of, well, Sampler is something that you buy from Ableton, but Simpler is part of Ableton Live. And people have been asking us of this for a while. Not too many people, but some people do. And now we're supporting that, so that's really nice. Most of the new samplers that we're supporting, and remember this is not only converting into it, but we also convert out of them. Most of them are the, uh, uh, most of them are the minor samplers. And you notice we've got two different categories. One is the major samplers and the other is the minor samplers. Uh, minor is a relative thing. I mean, if you're using the sampler and you're happy with it, it's certainly not minor to you. But when we're talking about minor, we're talking about ones that aren't, uh, they don't, they're not super samplers like Contact, but they're, they're done by smaller companies and have a smaller feature set. The first one we'll talk about actually isn't a software sampler at all, but it's, we kind of think of it that way. It's the Bowen uh, Solaris, which is something like the Dave Smith uh, Revolver and Prophet 6 and Prophet 12 and things. Um, it's a great analog synth and that handles user samples if you want to put into it. So uh, we support that format. Beatmaker, you may not have heard of, but it's an iOS app that allows you to do your own drum kits on an uh, iPad or an iPhone. Uh, Nano Studio is almost the same thing. It's an iOS app and uh, it plays back a lot more things than just drums, but it's mainly rhythmic and it's kind of like Beatmaker too. The next one is TX16WX, which is done by a company, I can't remember their name offhand, but from Spain. But it's a great sampler and has a great interface. It supports key switching rules, does all sorts of things. I, I don't know why they called it TX16WX. I guess in his mind, it was an improvement on the very, very old Yamaha sampler TX16W, which was here and gone. It was it was used by people and it eventually merged, turned into the A5, A3000, 4000, 5000 series. But anyway, that's what he names it and we support it. Again, this is converting into it and out of it. The next sampler is Grace and it, that's made by a company called One Small Clue. They make two programs. One is called Grace, which is a bona fide sampler and the other is Poise, which is a, uh, a drum box and you'll, we'll show you the feature set for that. But we support Grace, um, which is nice. Grace and Poise, I guess that's their joke on that. Westicott, I'm sure you haven't heard of, maybe you have, but they are a big pipe organ company and they have a software pipe organ now called Ranks, R-A-N-X, which is pretty smart as far as the name goes. And we support converting into that and out of that. They've got a nice little format for that. Uh, Waldorf, you sure know them as a fabulous synth maker, the microwave and all their really snazzy hardware things. But they've got software going and one of them is called Blofeld and you can uh, convert in and out of that uh, sampler format. The next one is called TAL Sampler and TAL is Togu Analog Line, I believe is what it stands for. We featured this in an email blast not too long ago and TAL Sampler is a, a little small little sampler but it does, it brags a lot about what it does as far as bit crushing and modeling as far as sounding like older samplers. So it's not, isn't meant to be this pristine thing that sounds like older synthesizers. So it's kind of snazzy in that respect. So we convert in and out of that format. The next minor sampler I talk about is uh, one called Nuance. It's done by a company I can't recall at the moment, but. Uh, they also have a program called Vice, which is a loop editor. But Nuance is a snazzy little sampler, and it's got the same minimalistic feel in its interface as Ableton uh, minor samplers do. So we convert, in, uh, uh, we convert into it. We don't convert out of it. You can convert out of stuff that we produce, but that's a long story. But anyway, most of these formats we convert into and out of. So that's the minor samplers. Um, 
the groove boxes, we've got some new additions. One is actually an old thing called uh, Ableton drum racks. Those are, we've supported that for a while and a drum rack, each pad can have an instance of a sampler or a simpler instrument. We did a lot of programming for the rock band Rush for this and that has supported their shows for the last five years. And it's really handy and we, uh, we developed it for them and we carried it on and made it publicly available in Translator. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, the One Small Clue Poise drum kit, that's included here. That's where you select that. And also we've supported this before, but we fully flushed it, flushed it out in Translator version 6.1. It's Drumagog, which is a drum replacement program. It, you put it in, uh, plug it in with a, uh, uh, DAW and you can replace drums that are on a drum track so that's a handy thing and we support that you can put in your drum sounds into Drumagog format and use it as its drum replacer so the last new format that we want to show is the Motif MOX format and as you can see you, you selected here the Motif line started out with the classic then they made the ES which supported a gig's worth of memory samples then the XS, which is even better, really nice interface and wonderful sounds. The XF introduced the flash memory. You can have up to two gigs of flash memory on an XF, really exceptional. But the MOXF is kind of a light version of the XF and it can support up to a gig of flash memory. So that's really handy and we fully support it here. Um, of course, there's the Kronos 2.0. Kronos is just an excellent sampler and of course, that's not new, but I just want to sh show it off anyway. Okay, so that's the formats part of the presentation. Let's go on and let's look at the new features in Auto Sampler. Uh, you can see that we've put it on our main interface now. It used to be uh, accessible only from the menu things here, but now you can see it's available in the main interface. So you just click over and you've got the auto sampler and you can set up and you record, record and do everything like that. Because it's on the front interface, it can be detached. So guess what? You have the same separate thing if you want that. So you can put this on another monitor if you're using multiple monitors. See it's off the screen and now it's on the screen. And of course, just closing it puts it back. Okay, so the main thing that we put into the auto sampler is the ability for multi-channel support. And as you can see, that's where it is. It's in the process tab. And it's not just mono or stereo, but you can do four stereo pairs, or eight stereo pairs, or 16 stereo pairs, or even 32 stereo pairs, which is 64 channels. Um, this was uh, asked for by a client of ours who wanted to multi-sample some things that were already uh, multiple outputs and they wanted to get them all separated. So we introduced that for them and it's been really handy so far. Uh, let's look at some other things. Now we support the ability of recording on different stereo pairs, not just one and two. It used to be we could only record on one and two, but now you can record on any of these. This isn't related to multi-channel support. It's just when you're in regular sample stereo mode see there you can indicate which channel which stereo pair you're going to indicate another handy thing let's go back into multi-channel mode is the ability to dictate what what mono uh if if things out of the pairs are going to be mono samples you can choose which so if i do one three four and six uh, separated by commas. The stereo pair one and two, it's going to ignore channel two and make number one a mono sample. Three and four, it'll not make a stereo sample out of three and four, but make two mono samples, one three and one four. And then you can see with number six, it's going to take the right side of the five and six, five to six pair and make that a mono sampler. So you can indicate what your mono channels will be like that. That's really handy. Okay, there's some other uh, functions that we put in. One is create folder per area. And this is for when you're doing multiple velocities or multiple rules like round robin or key switching and stuff. 
this separates the samples in different folders. So they're not just written flat into one folder, they're put into different folders. So checking that enables that function. Note names as numbers, what that does is most of the time we write out note names, like if it's middle C, it's C4 or it's C3, depending on the format that you've selected here. Uh, but note names as numbers, that will write out a number. So if it's middle C, it'll be 036. Uh, I'm sorry, 060, 060, because MIDI note 60 is middle C. So if you've got that selected, that's what the naming will wind up being. Let's look at some other features. One is the naming. We have our regular way of doing it, but there's also a, a new one that we put in there, which has the name of the name of what you're going to be sampling, but it'll also put in the channel, if there's a channel, the note, the velocity, and the round robin, if those are all enabled. So it's a, a different naming scheme. Let's see what else we got. We also have allow separate lengths, which when you're in multi-channel mode, every single sample will be the same length. But if you've selected allow separate length, it will truncate the ends. So if there's one sample that fades out way before the others, it will truncate the end. And that's kind of handy. Um, in the process tab, we have no silent sample. So if you have that checked, if you're doing an auto sampling session and one of the notes that you hit is just silence, it won't write that sample and won't make the reference into the program that you made. So that's pretty handy. Um, I think that's just about it. As you can see with the switch tab, you can choose key switches or controller switches or round robin or all, all three of them. Um, one thing that we haven't put in yet but will show in Translator 6.1 will be the parameter tab. And this will be full of just regular parameters like uh, envelopes for the volumes and the filters and the pitches or anything that you want to pre-select and pre-program into the eventual program that you'll write will be selectable here. Uh, the last thing I want to point out is the basic tab which has always been in there but the nice thing about the basic tab is that it just has all the things that are the major things that are in the different tabs into one tab. So if you're just going simple all you have to do is just hit basic tab, get it to where you want it and go. So that's pretty much it for the auto sampler stuff. Um, let's look at the new status dialog, and this is when you're doing a conversion. And uh, we'll we'll convert this emu bank, and we'll convert it into contact, and we'll write it to the desktop. And you might want to when we get uh, when I click OK, I'll start up. So you might want in this video to stall it or just pause it so you can see exactly what it looks like. The nice thing about the new uh, status dialog is that it shows exactly what you're converting, when and how. It's, it's a lot more clear than it used to, used to be, and it's a, it looks a little cooler too. So let's start on this. Remember, we're converting an EMU bank into contact. Here it goes. You can see EMU contacts instrument shows these things, shows the presets. And of course, that's really fast and it's all done. So that's the new status dialog. Um, let's look, the last thing we want to take a look at is just the minor interfaces to the front panel. You can see we've got our little logo down here with our name and what it is. And the version number and the build number, of course, is, doesn't say it's 6.1 yet. It's just the, we keep the old build numbers until we actually change them over. So you can see how that works. Um, you can see that we're able to push this up so we've got a better range of uh, space in our dialogue and of course you know as you know you can make this as big and as small as you want of course you're limited how small it makes because we've got to consider the different things of course you can make it totally huge that looks ridiculous right now I know but let's go back to just having a normal last this is actually the last thing that I want to show um, the make that look better. Uh, if you're doing a bulk conversion and you're taking this folder and you double click on it to convert it, you can see that the bulk export dialog is full, fully fledged that you can see all the parameters over there as well. So basic, it's just like this, any to contact, anything that's in that folder. But so you can see that 
contact, you've got the contact options, uh, sample tank, you've got the sample tank options and such like that. So that's kind of handy. Again, our goal is to make uh, things as smooth and easy for you so there's no guessing. Thank you very much for watching the Translator 6.1 sneak peek video. Uh, if you have any questions, we're available at our website or our email address, support at chickensys.com. We've got a, a chat applet at our website so you can chat with us at any time. And we can even be called on the telephone. So if you have any questions, there's always somebody to take your call. Phone number is 320-235-9798. We return calls and return emails always within a couple hours or at the most within 24 hours, except on weekends. But even then, we help people as much as we can, as soon as we can. Thank you very much for your time and happy sampling.